Master of the sun Memories falling on concrete Right, hi there, good morning, welcome back. Now today, best laid plans. I was going to do a tour review today, but sadly due to one thing and another, an occurrence over the course of last weekend, I can't do that now, I've got a repair to make to Penny's Triumph, and that's got to be done because we're going out this weekend, I can't get the parts before the weekend, it's going to be about a week for the parts to come, and we want to go out this weekend. And the problem, the reason that we can't, and the reason I've got to deal with this repair, is this. This is the gear lever. This is the gear lever for Penny's Scrambler. And that is the current state of it. Now, what happened was, over last weekend, we were parked on a slight downslope. There was no option. We had to park there. Probably should have left the bike in gear, I imagine, but we didn't. And ultimately, there it is. It rolled forward slightly rolled off the stand and fell on its side. And as it fell on its side, that was the first casualty snapping off. Once that was out of the way, then the arm itself took a hit on the ground. So there's a scar on that and a little scar on the end. Now what's happened is this pin through the center here, this metal pin has sheared. As you can see by the end there, it's got a little peg that would have stuck out that's still in there, the remainder of it. So that's the task today is to drill that out, get rid of that debris. The pin that's broken, that actual part there, expecting a heavy bill that only comes to seven pound 54 that is all that costs seven pounds 54 pence for one of them but they don't have any at the moment they're not in stock and they're not going to be for about a week and i want to go out on the bikes so or we want to go out on the bikes this weekend so i want to make something that's going to do that job today the arm however whilst we got chatting he said how is the arm do you need a new one thankfully i don't because the arm i kid you not here it is part number 208 1144 is Ready? 96 pounds, 57 pence. 96 pounds, 57 pence for that. Oh my goodness, that's just outrageous. But there we go, that's what these things cost. It is an independent casting, that's it. It's unique to that bike. It's even dated, 2012 Triumph, and it's even got its part number stamped in the back. So that's a pretty unique item. Doesn't fit, I guess, any other bike, but there we are. I'm jolly glad I didn't break it. I've still got to get the, the little tiny sheared off bit off out the end there, that bit that broke off. That's got to come out. Now here's the thing. First of all, I'm thinking, wow, you know, seven pounds 50 for the broken pin, and that sacrificially snapped and saved the arm, which is 96 pound 50 odd. Clever triumph. Impressed, really. I like that, that shows common sense. Let's make the part that's likely to break cheap and cheerful, I like that. But actually, if you think about it, the average Joe who's got no tools isn't gonna to be able to screw a new one in because it's sheared off, as it was designed to shear off. So how's the average Joe gonna get that out without a drill and a tap and an easy out and all the rest? And also, you can still bugger that up trying to get that screwed out. You could actually mess up the thread in there. And when this is on the bike, that is, that close to the engine casing. So you're not gonna get a bolt on the inside that easily. You'd have to chamfer it and put a machine set screw in or something that's flush. All engineering skills, all basic skills you need to do yourself. So again, if you're the average Joe who's got no tools, you're still gonna to have to go to the dealer and say, can you fix this? So even if they don't have to sell you one of them, they're gonna charge you an hour's labor to drill that out and bolt the new one in. And how much is an hour's labor? 97 quid. <laughs> it makes you despair sometimes, it really does. Anyway, right. What I'm going to do, because I won't be able to get one of them for about 10 days, I'm going to make one. So today's task is to take the rubber off that and create that as close as I can in a usable way so that Penny can ride a bike this weekend. Wish me luck. Let's get stuck in. Right, everything set up. The first task before I go anywhere else is to get that out. I've got to get that broken piece out. Um, I don't know whether that's been thread locked in. I imagine it probably has, which in which case it could be a little bit of a challenge to get it out. However, there's two options. I can either take it out from that way or that way. And probably the path of least resistance is the one that's near the surface. There is kind of, um, an orange residue around that, which I'm thinking is probably thread lock. So I'm gonna be careful. So if you wanna do this kind of thing for yourself, save you 97 quid, you can do.
There we are, got it right in the center. I didn't want to center punch it. I didn't want to put any shock or impact of a center punch through this casting. It's already out of whack. So just trying to do it gently. And thankfully that little center drill's gone right where I need it. Right, there we are. Um, had to go old school in the end and just literally drill it straight through all the way to the other side. If you've got a cylinder head stud snapped off, it's a similar thing. Sometimes you can't get an easy out in there to undo them and take them out. Uh, sometimes you can't get a pair of grips on there. You simply have to drill through, especially if they snap off flush. But being careful with easy outs because if you snap them off in there, like snapping a drill bit off in there, they're so hard, you'll never get them out. You'll never drill them out. And there's no other way of getting them out. So it's it's a real world of hurt and for this it's a 97 pound world of hurt so i don't want to break this that is now out as you can see whole way through but there's a lot of flotsam in there still i drilled it out of the six mil drill bit so that's an m8 thread so it's quite big still there's a lot of debris in there so i'm going to run through very carefully confident that i've gone through in the middle i'm going to run through carefully with it with an um, a seven mil and take out as much of that debris as i can and then it would just be an M8 tap, hopefully, to restore the original thread. That will really be nice. Wish me luck. And there's the last little bits of the bolt, the remainders of the old thread comes out in little chips. Messy business. Right, let's re-tap it. pushing out all the last bits of the old bolt. Right, there we are. That's it, done. Two hours, believe it or not. There we are. That's, you can see that there, absolutely immaculate perfect thread very happy with that and it's eight mil so that will now screw in there now obviously I'm not going to do that that's rubbish I've seen all too many bikes do that as a remedy I'm going to make a proper effort at the bolt um, this takes a long time it truly does if you've got a sheared off bolt uh, it's not just a case of everyone says oh just drill it out if you ever try it it is harder than it looks because you really have got to go right down the center to get that as much of the material out as you can you're drilling steel out of aluminium. Aluminium is softer, so it's all too easy for the drill to wander off into the alloy material because that's going to give, it's going to yield sooner. And what you're trying to drill out, what, what you've got to drill out too, is that. That's a little piece of the, of the original stud there. I don't know if you can see it. But that shows you, you've got to drill it out to that thinness. You've got to come out so it's literally just the thread alone. Sorry if it's not really a macro lens on this camera, but seriously, it's not easy. And that's hard. Even that was resisting letting the tap through. You've got to come back out, go back in, come back out. Don't ever force it because the minute you force things like drill bits and taps, they snap off. And once you've got anything, any tool snapped off in there, well, it's in there forever, isn't it? You're never going to get it out. Not in this lifetime. So there we are, saved. 97 pounds or 96 pound 57. Saved. I've just got to polish it at the end. Now, let's make that bolt. It's this thing. Let's see what I can do to make that look like that when it goes back on the bike. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Let's get on with it.
Well, there we are, that's it all cleaned up. It's stainless steel, so I was able to just spin the end and clean it. And uh, the next thing is to drill a hole down the end of it, uh, probably to seven mil, and then thread it, and then put a piece of stud in there that will give me my thread back. And it'll also be removable thread, because if it ever snaps again, I can then unscrew that and screw a new piece in just of an old random bolt. So that'll work, and that'll be kind of safe. And I can just keep using it. So the next thing is to drill right down the center of that. With a lathe, piece of cake, stick it in the lathe, bring in the center drill, bump straight in the center. You can even thread it that way as well. That would be a piece of cake, five minute job. One of the reasons I want a lathe, I keep saying this, I know I've been saying it, the lathe was meant to be here in February, but things have transpired different ways, expenses have come in and we've had to put things on the back burner. That's the way life goes, you know it is boys. So there we are. I've got to do that the other way. Now I could spin that in the drill and find the center that way, but that won't go in the drill because it's too fat. I haven't got a big enough chuck in the drill, which again is I want to get a pillar drill with a bigger chuck so I can get bigger things in like that. But for now, I've got to find the center of that the old fashioned way and hope that when I hit it with the center punch, it's in the middle. Bang in the middle. Yeehaw. Well, here we are, okay, screws in. That's stainless, that's stainless, so I'm gonna thread lock it in. As you know, stainless parts like to rattle apart, so I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of blue temporary thread lock, not the red permanent forever stuff that was in that arm. Once that's in there, half of that thread will go inside there and the other half will go in the arm and I'll just lock the head off, clean up the end, and then the whole thing will screw in and do its job. There we are, practically done, let's assemble it.
Right, there we are. Okay, done now. That means we can go and play at the weekend. I've ordered another one and it will go in the box as a spare, so if it ever happens again, hopefully it won't, then I've got one that can screw straight in. I don't think it's a fantastic design. I like the fact that they make a simple pin that shears off, that's sacrificial. If it's even meant to be, I don't know. Perhaps they didn't even think of it that way. But the metal around the end of that arm is quite thick and that's why it didn't snap off. So I'm quite happy with that, especially since they're nearly 97 pounds each. I personally would have designed that a little bit differently. I'd have put a little bit more meat around the end of that arm to make it a bit stronger, made a clearance hole with no thread in it whatsoever and just put a bolt on the other side and then screw the pin to the bolt. So if it snaps off, you can just poke that piece of broken bolt out and put another one in. You could even carry such a spare bolt, a little M8 or something in your spares, and you could do it on the side of the road. It would be absolutely no difficulty at all. But having to drill out that piece of broken stud, that was a task in itself. It's now up us three. I probably took two and a half hours to try and get that out really carefully. And you saw the shaving at the end that came out. I was almost perfect down the center. I've never been that close. Normally you end up with half of it and you've gone into the thread a little bit too, but thankfully not in this occasion. I made a real nice job, perfect thread through the arm itself, the big expensive piece, and then put a little piece of stud in there to screw the old pin back on. So I'm happy with that. Penny will be happy with that too, because it means we go and play at the weekend. So there we are, that's it. Now I'll try again and do the tour review for the weekend. And then after that, back on the build, I've got to shave off all the flotsam and air extra bits and pieces of fiberglass to start shaping that under tray and hopefully then get that into paint. And then we are getting closer and closer to getting this tank on the road for its MOT. But there we are. Let's not run before we can walk. Let's get on with one step at a time. So there we are. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Ride safe. I'll see you at the weekend, hopefully this time, for a tour review. Thanks for watching. To be my enemy Victim of your cards I'm running in the dark Avenger into night